Listen, feel the atmosphere. Your glory got what I heart's long for. To be overcome by your essence, Lord. Holy Spirit, yes, Lord, in your presence. Holy Spirit, we want your presence. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, we call on your name, hallelujah, 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 spirit of the living God, Holy Spirit, how welcome here. And the Baba Shendere Bosi Karababa She. Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. Oh Jesus, 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 we welcome you in this place. Your presence, your presence, we pray your presence. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Come to this place and feel the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what I has. I has long for your glory. My heart loves for your glory. Oh, my heart loves for your glory. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. We call on your we want you to come, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here, come slow this place and feel the atmosphere, your presence, the glory of Hallelujah. More away. Hallelujah. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. We welcome you. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, we call on your name tonight. We invite your presence. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we call on you tonight. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. The song says, do you see me when I sit down, Lord? And when I rest my weary head upon my bed? And when I rise on the wings of the morning? Do you see me then, God? Oh, God, do you see us then? Do you see me then? Oh, I find myself. Oh, God, sometimes we seem unnoticed. Oh, God, do you see us, Lord? 
Yes, Jesus. Sometimes we feel lost and forgotten. Do you see me there? Do you see me there? Oh, Jesus. Do you hear my whispers, God? Do you know my every thought, Lord? Father, do you see me? When I cry out, God, do you hear me? When I sing out, Lord, do you hear me? Oh, God. Cry out, saints, cry out to your father. Say, God, do you see me? He's our Elroy, the God who sees us. Now the Lord says, I see you, child. I see you when you rest your weary head on your bed at night, oh God. God says, I see you, child. Hallelujah. On the wings of the oh, when you ride on the wings of the morning. God says, child, I see you then. I see you then. Yes, I see you then. Thank you, Jesus. God says you're not alone. He holds us close forever. He holds us in his arms. All our dreams he holds in his hand. Shall I see you? I see you then. Yes, I see you then. Oh, God, gaze upon my heart. Hear my every cry, Lord. Hear my every whisper, Lord. In the dark of the night, when I am desperate, oh God, hear me. Oh Jesus, be not far away from me, God. Hear me when I cry out. When I sing, oh God, when I worship you, God, in the secret place. Holy Spirit, meet me in the secret place. See me, hear me, touch me. Jesus, Jesus. He hears our every whisper. He knows our every thought. Oh, yes, Lord. He hears us when we cry out to him. All those secret cries. Hallelujah, God. Lord, I know you see me. Yes, Lord, you see me. He says, child, I see you. Oh, this is a beautiful, beautiful moment when the Lord sees me and he sees you. Hallelujah. Oh, God, be thou glorified in our midst. Saints, lift up your voice and begin to worship and begin to thank him for seeing you, for hearing you, for hearing your every cry. Hallelujah. Today, today we're going to begin to learn about how we build altars of prayer, altars of worship, how we create that secret place where the Lord can meet us there and we can begin to shift the darkness and invite the light, hallelujah. We're gonna take one more song.
one more worship song before we go into our teaching for tonight. And this song is is a song that the Lord blessed yours truly with. And and I'm talking in this song about the Lord meeting me in the secret place and touching me and cleaning me up and, and purifying me. Some of you know this song. Just worship along with me. It says, purify me. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. Oh God, I come in your presence. Come in your presence. Oh yes, Lord. There is no pretense as to who I am when I come in your presence. So I lay on the altar my shame and my pain. Intimacy is what I want, Lord. Hallelujah. Ooh, you are my yes, Lord. You are my lover, my everything. Hallelujah. The lover of our soul. I give you my heart tonight, God. Father, we ask that you would purify us tonight. God, that you would sanctify us, oh God. That you would justify us, Father. Father, cleanse us, wash us with your blood tonight. Rectify us, oh God. Father, make us beautiful, Heavenly Father. Oh, Jesus, we come into your presence. We come on your altar, oh God, tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we have come. We bow before your throne, oh God, in worship. Saints, open up your heart. Allow him to touch you. Yes, Jesus. Father, you are the lover of our soul. You are the one who keeps us, oh God, through the storm. Yes, Jesus. We give you our hearts tonight. We give you everything, God, that we are. We lay everything down, oh God, at your altar tonight. We are humbled in your presence. Father, we stand, oh God, empty and naked before you. Yes, Jesus, we know that we need you. And we hunger for your presence. We hunger for your healing, oh God. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, we just invoke your presence. We invoke your presence, oh God. Jesus, Jesus. Sanctify me. Take me to a higher place, God. To a deeper place in you, O oh Lord. Elevate each of the saints on the prayer line tonight. Oh God, take us deeper, deeper, deeper. The word of God says that deep calleth unto deep. Thank you, Jesus. Saints just soak in his presence. Purify me, God. Sanctify me. Yeah. Justify me. Yeah. Elevate me up. Rectify me. Uh-huh. Beautify me, Lord. Purify me, Jesus. Sanctify me. Yes. Only you, God, can justify us, oh Heavenly Father. Rectify us, oh Lord. 
beautify us, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Son of the living God, the lover of our souls. Father, we thank you for your presence because we know, oh God, that you inhabit the praises of your children. I just cover this prayer line with the blood of Jesus. I seal it with the blood of Jesus at this time. Oh God, I pray that you will give us a spirit of wisdom and understanding and a spirit of knowledge, oh God, even as we begin to go into your word. Father, that your word will flow unobstructed on this prayer line tonight. Open up our understanding, oh God, that we will receive of your word. God, that we will be transformed. That your word will bring life, oh God, into our spirits. God, that your word will breathe life to all the dry bones, oh God. Hallelujah. We bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Be thou magnified on this prayer line. Be thou exalted, O King of glory. Father, we worship you, we bow. King of glory, we celebrate you one more time. Father, we don't take it for granted. The graves are full tonight, but God, your mercy upon our lives said no, that we can come before you one more time. God, we will not be silent. We will open up our mouth and worship. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you, O God. We honor you, O God. We cry holy unto your mighty name. Lion of Judah, be thou exalted on this prayer line. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, God. Since you are welcome on the prayer line, as you all know, in the last seven weeks, we were learning about destroying evil altars. And last week, we began to come against some of the altars, the evil altars in the nation of Cameroon as we were led by our sister Quinta. At this time, we're going to begin to look at how we build an altar unto the Lord. There is no need to try to destroy evil altars if you don't understand how to build an altar unto the Lord. And so we're going to learn how to create that space, hallelujah, where the Lord, where divinity can meet humanity. And this time, the divine presence is not evil. This time, the divine presence is our heavenly father, hallelujah, amen, amen. We wanna learn how to draw the presence of God because it is the presence of God, it is only the presence of God that can contend with the darkness. It is only the presence of God that can push back the darkness, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, saints, in, in the Old Testament, in the Old Dispensation, we see so many instances where 
mighty men of God would use um, stones to build an altar. I'm not coming here tonight to, to teach you how to put stones together to build an altar. We don't need to do that anymore because Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice on the ultimate altar, the cross. But there's still a way that we can build an altar unto the Lord. And for the next few weeks, we're going to look at different ways in which you can create that place where the Lord meets you, where you can be that priest on the altar and bring down the presence of God. Hallelujah. So your altar can be, you know, it can be a spare bedroom. It can be an office space. You can find any space where you can have privacy, any space where where it's your special place, where you want you know that you can go there in in quietness and in solitude and meet with the Lord. I mean, for me, as a matter of fact, I am sitting in my altar right now. I do the prayer line from my altar every week. I have a space in my in a room in my house where. I meet with the Lord and the more you use that space to pray, to worship, to study the word of God, the more that place becomes an open heaven. The more you start to feel the presence of God in that space, the more that space becomes like a gateway into the heavens. And it begins to spread the presence of God, not just in that spot, but even in the whole house. Hallelujah. So I encourage each of you, if you do not already have a special place where you pray, a place where you have consecrated it to the Lord. I strongly encourage you, you know, as we go through the next few weeks to to find that special place in your house. You can have one in your house. You can have one, you know, in in wherever, in your office, if you have maybe a private business or whatever. I'm sure many of you have gone to nail salons. You have seen how the heaven create altars to their gods. If you go into nail salons to do your nails, you have seen that. You know what I'm talking about. They don't care who's coming in there. They don't care if you know or serve their God. They don't care if they're going to have a busy day working. They have their altar to their God. How much more the children of the living God? Hallelujah. So let's just start by looking at why is it even important to have an altar unto the Lord? The first thing I would say is because it will open a gateway. It will open a portal to heaven in that special place that is dedicated, dedicated to God. You see, God cares about land. God cares about spaces and places. And we see that all through the Bible. And we see that God will open a gateway. There's instances in the Bible where we see how God opened a gateway. As a matter of fact, I want to read from the book of Genesis. Let me read through this. And we're going to see what happened um, with Jacob. Okay. Genesis 28, I'm going to start from verse 10. It says, Jacob left Bathsheba and set out for Haran. When he reached a certain place, you see, a certain place. If you're going to have an altar in your home, it needs, it's preferably a certain place. I'm not saying that that's the only place where you pray. No, in the modern dispensation, you know what? We carry the spirit of God in us. As a matter of fact, we are a walking altar as well. But for the purposes of tonight's teaching, we're going to be looking at that special place, that certain place. He stopped for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones there, again, in the Old Testament, they use a stone. He put it under his head and he lay down to sleep. He had a dream in which he saw a stairway resting on the earth with its top reaching to heaven. And the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. There above it stood the Lord, and he said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham and the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. You see, land is important to the Lord. Even God himself will select special pieces of land 
to do a special thing with it. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth and you will spread out to the west and to the east. We see how in a special place where an altar is being built in a consecrated place, we see how the Lord has brings forth a covenant. We see how the Lord establishes a covenant. So in the same way, even for us as children of God today, when you consecrate that special place, you dedicate a special time where you come and you begin to invoke the presence of God and you meet with God, God will come down. You see how he put that stone, he lay his head down. The song that we worship, it was talking about God, when I lay my head down, you come to that place and you begin to invoke the Holy Spirit and the presence of God comes, it, he meets you in that place. Saints of God, the law will establish a covenant with you when you consecrate that special place where you meet with him on a regular basis. The Lord will come and meet you and bless you. All peoples on earth will be blessed through you and your offering and your offspring. Sorry, I'm with you and I will watch over you wherever you go and I will bring you back to this land. What is watching over you? That is protection. We've been talking about this. Uh, about destroying evil altars. This is one of the ways in which you destroy evil altars. You build an altar unto the Lord. You consecrate a special place unto the Lord where divinity meets humanity, where the Lord comes down and he covenants with you. And part of that covenant involves protection against the forces of darkness. Hallelujah. The word of God says, and I will bring you back to this land and I will, I will not leave you again, protection, provision. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Saints, is that not a beautiful thing? When Jacob awoke from his sleep, he thought, surely the Lord is in this place. This place. And I was not aware of it. Since if you have been praying in a particular place, you're going to find that one day you notice that, oh my gosh, I've been using this space to pray. And all along, maybe I did not realize it, but suddenly I start to feel the presence of the Lord in that place. And Jacob said, he was afraid and he said, how awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. Since, listen, it says, this is the gate of heaven. How many know that you can create a gate of heaven right in your own home? Hallelujah. Early the next morning, Jacob took the stone he had placed under his head. He set it up as a pillar and he poured oil on top of it. He called that place Bethel. This is the house of God. We see how Jacob used a stone. He used a special place. We see how he poured the oil and he consecrated it unto the Lord. By he named it, he called you, you can name your altar, hallelujah. You can name your special place where you meet with God. So saints, if you're wondering, what is it that you need to put in your altar? The word of God has given us some ideas. You see the oil was poured. You know what? It's very simple. You want to make sure that you have that special place where you, you have the word of God, your Bible that you're going to read your olive oil that you might use during your prayer time, maybe your prayer shawl. I have a prayer shawl in my altar. I have my olive oil. I have my communion. I have the things that I need when I come in the presence of the Lord. I have it all in that one space. You want to have that place where it is quiet, where you don't have people, you know, going through to and fro in that area because you want a place where it is your secret place with you and God. Where when you come into that place, there is no distraction. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
So we've learned from that Bible verse that God will open a portal to heaven in a place that is dedicated to him. He will meet you in that place. The second thing is that when you have a dedicated altar, like I said, it needs to be a quiet place. Why? Because it's a place where you go to feed your spirit. Because our spirits have a need for separation and solitude unto the Lord. You want to have that place where you're separated from other things. There is no distraction. Every one of us needs time alone with God. You need that place where you go and you can just be quiet and you can lock yourself up. We see in the, in the word of God that Jesus himself used to take time alone with God. He used to pull himself away. He would go to the mountains. He would go into a special place. He would go into a secret place. Hallelujah. If Jesus needed time alone with God, he would go into a deserted place. How about you and I? If Jesus took time out to commune with God, where it was just him and God, how about you and I? So we want to make an altar in a special quiet place that separates us from the chaos of life, where we can go there and we can lay face down with God. Since when I come into my, my secret place, when I come into my altar space, my husband and my children will tell you most of the time when they, if they open the door, I'm lying on the floor. I weep. It's my threshing floor. David did the same thing. He built, he bought the threshing floor. You go on the threshing floor, you weep on the threshing floor. You invoke the presence of God. You cry out to him. Hallelujah. It is a beautiful thing to create that space and that moment. You can even have a dedicated time where you come in your secret place. You come before that, your altar. And the Lord knows that at, those, at that particular time, you're going to meet him there. You know, think about when you first fell in love for those of you that are married. Didn't you set a, a particular time that you were going to meet your lover? Did, did you and your lover not have a special place? Maybe the special place where you first met. Think about the affection with which you, you think of that place. How many people have gone back to those places? Maybe to rededicate and renew their vows. Why? Because it's a place of intimacy. Your altar is a place of intimacy. Hallelujah. So you want to pick a place that is quiet. You want to tidy it up. You want to put everything that you need that will help you to go before the Lord. You want to make sure you have all the materials that you use, your Bible and so forth, your olive oil, your communion, your prayer shawl, maybe your concordance, a pen, a pencil, you know, all the different things that you need when you, you want to study the word of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So since it's a very, very important thing to make sure that you protect that space and that time. And what do you do once you come into that place? I'm going to go into it briefly today and then in the next few weeks. We're going to go in a bit more detail. Tonight was really meant to be an introduction into how you, you create your secret place, that altar unto the Lord. Hallelujah. So when you come in before the Lord, some of the things that you can do, you know, we all pray as we go through the day. Maybe you pray in your car. You pray as you're cooking in the kitchen. You worship. You sing along as you go. If you're like me, you know, you're a singer in your soul and your spirit. You sing throughout the day. But that's, we're talking about more than that. We're talking about a consecrated time and moment and space where even the Lord knows 
that when you come into that place, One of the biggest things that you do is you begin to invoke the presence. You begin to invite the presence. You're not in a rush. You take enough time. You bring down the presence. You know, a lot of us know how to pray and how to sing worship songs and pray songs, but we don't know how to invoke the presence. We don't know how to come before God, lay down at his feet and wait upon the presence of God to descend in that place. And the way to do that is you can start with worship. You you, you know, you can use worship songs to help you to get it started. And you begin to feel the presence of God begin to come down. And then you begin to give God your own worship. You begin to invite God, begin to invite the Holy Spirit. And then you can just lay quiet in solitude and quietness. And allow the presence to descend like a blanket over you and over that space. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Just feel his presence come down on you. Even in this moment as I speak, the presence of God is meeting each and every one of us wherever we are. The presence is coming down. Be quiet and just let the Holy Spirit fall upon you. Let divinity touch humanity. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. So you draw the presence of God. You invoke the presence of God. You can study the word when you come before the altar. Not in a rush. This is where you allow the spirit of God to give you revelation. So when you build an altar before the Lord, you will get revelation. Because this is not just a... a, a drive through reading of, of a verse. You allow yourself to soak in the word of God in that secret place. Hallelujah. Remember, every altar needs to have a priest. And you are the priest on that altar. Your heart is actually the first altar. And that's why you open up your heart in quietness and you allow the presence of God to abide in your heart. You stay connected. Why? Because you're not rushing when you come in your secret place on the altar of the living God. You're not in a rush. You need to be ready to stay there as long as you need to. Until the presence of God comes down. You see, sometimes it will take an hour for the presence of God to come down. Sometimes it may happen immediately. Sometimes it may take two hours of you being there, worshiping and waiting upon the Lord. I know in today's world, we're used to having everything quick and easy. But saints, if you really want to get in the deep, if you really want to invoke the strong presence of the Lord, most men and women of God will tell you this is how we get revelation. This is how we get the power to cast out devils. This is how we have the spirit of prophecy heavy upon us. You wait upon the Lord. You go before your altar in that secret place. You wait and dwell as long as you need to. Sometimes you're quiet. A lot of us are used to always being the ones talking to God. 
we come with a list and we begin to read out our list to God. That's not what I'm talking about here. This is about you learning how to bring down the presence of God. You wait on God. It's not the other way around. You wait on God for as long as he takes for the presence to come down. And when that presence comes, saints, sometimes the presence will be tangible. I've had situations where I felt like I could cut it with a knife. When the presence comes down heavy, you find that you cannot even talk. You find that you're broken before God. You find that you just weep in his presence. Hallelujah. You feel the presence of the angels of God around you. It begins to push the darkness. When you get to that space, you don't even need to travail. You don't even need to fight. You don't even need to do spiritual warfare in this place in the way that we know spiritual warfare to be. Because when the presence comes down this heavy on the altar, it will just naturally push back the darkness. Since you are a holy priesthood, I am a holy priesthood. We need to learn how to minister unto the Lord in the new dispensation, in the secret place where you build an altar, you build that consecrated space for God. Hallelujah. You see, the kingdom of darkness, the children of darkness, they make sure that they build their evil altars. Those authors cry out against children of God. And until we learn how to build active altars unto the Lord and keep our altars active, this is not about picking up some stones and just creating a physical place and then you don't do not anything with that place. That's not what I'm talking about. You have to keep your altar active. And I've just described to you some of the things that you can do to keep your altar active. There is more that we need to do, but I'm not going to cover everything today. In subsequent sessions, we're going to talk about the sacrifice on the altar. Hallelujah. So our time is almost up for today. I pray that you were blessed. Hallelujah that you have learned something and that each of you can begin to go before the Lord and begin to find that place in your home, in your closet, in your bedroom, in your office space. If you have an office at home, I don't know, you know, find the place, create that place, that special place. Say, Lord, I'm going to make this place for you and I, God. Well, you're going to meet me, God, and, and there's going to be an open heaven above that place where, God, when I come there, you're going to come and meet with me. You're going to commune with me in that place. Hallelujah. Until we, the children of God, learn how to not just build an altar, but to minister as a priest upon that altar and keep the altar active. where we go before the Lord upon that altar on a daily basis and learn how to also cry upon our altars. We have to be able to cry on those altars louder than the evil priests that cry on the evil altars against us. We have learned in the last few weeks that when the evil priest goes on the evil altar and cries against you, Sickness begins to follow you. Stagnation begins to follow you. Poverty and lack begins to follow you. When you learn how to come upon the altar of the Lord and minister as a priest and bring down the presence of God, you learn how to cry on the altar of the Lord. Then you can begin to push back darkness. 
and change your story and change the story of your family. You can begin to change the atmosphere in your home as a whole and begin to dispel sickness, dispel lack, dispel poverty, dispel frustration, dispel all the evil, all the darkness. Unless your altar is active, you will never be able to push back the, out, the, the active demonic altars from the kingdom of darkness that are speaking against you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we bless you for the teaching, God, that you have given us tonight. Father, I just raise every saint on this prayer line before you, O oh God. Father, that you will teach us how to, to build that place, that space, O oh God, to consecrate that time, God, where we come before you. God, teach us how to minister as a holy priesthood, O oh God, unto you. Father, as we begin to learn how to come before you, how to raise an altar, God, oh God, an altar of prayer, an altar of worship. God, even as we offer ourselves as a living sacrifice upon your altar, God, I pray, God, that you open the heavens above us. God, that you meet us in that place. God, that you will touch us in that place. God, that you will overwhelm us, oh God, in that place. That you will cover us, oh God, in that place. God, that you will shield us in that place, oh God. God, that you will take us into the deep in that place. God, that you will take us into higher heights in that place, oh God. God, that your presence will never depart from that place, from that special place, oh God, that we are about to create, God, for you. God, for those of us who have families, teach our families, oh God, how to build an altar. God, teach us to come as a family before your altar. God, to come with our spouses and to come with our children before you, O oh God. God, teach us how to cry out before you upon your altar. God, that we will learn how to cry louder than the forces of darkness. Oh, Jesus, we bless your name tonight for this teaching. Wonderful counselor, mighty God, ancient of days, bread of heaven. Oh God, you are the redeemer of mankind. We worship you tonight, oh God. Saints, begin to worship the Lord. As we come to the close of our teaching tonight, open up your mouth and just begin to worship him. Begin to thank him. Yes, Jesus, lover of my soul, I give you every glory, every honor, every power be unto your holy name. Oh God, you reign from everlasting to everlasting, oh God. You are the mighty man in battle. Father, show yourself strong upon our altars, oh God, that we are about to raise for you in the coming days. Oh, King of glory, you are welcome in our consecrated spaces and places. Father, we invite your mighty presence. Father, I ask that as each child of yours on this prayer line begins to make that special place where they will meet with you, O oh God. Father, we come in anticipation that you will meet us in that place, King of glory. The Lamb of God, the Lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. 
Oh God, that even as we come upon the altar, that every knee will bow, oh God, every mountain, oh God, will be cast into the sea. Hallelujah. God, you are Lord over this prayer line. You are our God. We look to you, oh God, even as we get ready to leave this line. Father, that your presence will never depart from us, oh God. Father, I ask that you will breathe upon us. Breathe upon us. Breathe upon us, oh God, with your mighty presence. In every dry place in our lives, oh God. Father, we have come upon the prayer line tonight. Some of us have come burdened. Oh God, there is sickness upon the prayer line tonight. God, there is sickness upon the prayer line tonight. Father, your word says that by your stripes we are healed, oh God. I just release a healing anointing upon this prayer line. I release a healing anointing. I release a healing anointing. I release a healing anointing. Some of you on the prayer line need to stand on the gap for someone else who is sick. Hallelujah. I send the fire of healing, consuming fire of the living God. Oh, God, you see your sick children. Oh, God, sickness is not from you. It is from the pit of hell. I send the fire of God upon that sickness tonight. I send the fire upon that sickness tonight. Begin to consume, oh, God, every growth. Consume it, oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Burn, consume it, burn it into ashes, burn, burn, burn in the name of Jesus. I speak to that thing tonight. I command you to be cast into the sea in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I come against every spirit of fear upon this prayer line. Yes, the spirit of infirmity has brought fear, but I speak to that fear tonight. The Lord has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power. I release the spirit of power upon you tonight, child of God. I decree and declare over you that you shall no longer be fearful. I cast out that fear out of you in the name of Jesus. I release a sound mind upon you. I cast out every lie from the pit of hell. Oh, God, touch your daughter tonight. Touch your son tonight. The devil has been telling you that you will not make it. The devil keeps showing you yourself in a coffin, but I come against that thing tonight. Every coffin that has been built for you in the kingdom of darkness, I set it on fire tonight in the name of Jesus. I set it ablaze tonight in the name of Jesus. Death shall not be your portion. I come against the spirit of death. I come against the spirit of death. I come against it tonight in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I speak life upon your body. I breathe life upon your body. Just receive life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. I release hope. Hope. Receive it. In the name of Jesus. Healing is your portion tonight. Balm of Gilead flows ceaselessly 
upon this prayer line flow ceaselessly like a river of life. River of life. Oh, Rianda Rababa Shakaria City. River of life. Flow, flow upon the saints tonight and wash out every contamination, every evil deposit in your body and wash it out with the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I release the peace of God upon you. I quiet your spirit. I say, peace, be still. The word of God says, be still and know that I am God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Just receive your healing tonight. I rebuke that thing. I rebuke that thing. It shall not destroy you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, God, I just seal your children with the blood of Jesus tonight. I seal your children in the blood of Jesus tonight, oh God. I release the angels of God to minister unto every need on this prayer line. I curse that spirit of lack and poverty upon your life. Oh, God, I ask to open heavens upon your children tonight. Oh, God, rebuke the devourer over the lives of your children. I see a financial blockage over so many of you, oh, God. God, I ask for open doors. God, I ask for divine connections. Divine connections, oh, God, that will bring contracts. For those in business, oh God. God, some of your children need jobs, God. I release the favor of God upon you tonight. That even though you may not merit that position, God, that there shall be favor upon you. I crush every garment of dishonor upon you tonight in the name of Jesus. Every mark of darkness, I erase it from your forehead with the blood of Jesus tonight. Oh, God, I put a mark of favor upon you. Favor upon you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You shall no more wander in the wilderness for 40 years. All those stubborn problems, I curse you tonight. In the name of Jesus. Some of you have been wandering around the desert for 40 years. I break that thing tonight. I break the backbone of that strong man tonight. In the name of Jesus. I curse it tonight. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I release streams in desert places. Raka shekere bababasata. I release streams in desert places. Oh, I breathe life. I breathe life upon you. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, meet your children at the point of their need. God, I cannot give them what they need, but you can, oh God. God, I turn your children into your hands, oh God, as we leave the prayer line. God, that you will shield them, you will protect them. God, that you wipe the tears, oh God. Father, that you will strengthen them. 
God, that you will take them through the valley, oh God. That you shed the feet upon a rock, oh God. God, that they shall pursue their pursuers. God, that they will have a spirit of boldness. Thank you, Jesus. I cover every one of you with the blood of Jesus. I cover your homes. I cover your children. I cover your spouses. I cover your jobs. I cover your finances. I cover your body. I release a blood transfusion all through your body with the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. As I release each and every one of you from the prayer line, go with the peace of God. May his grace continue to rest upon each and every one of you. May his mercies be new every morning in your life. As you continue to go before him in forgiveness. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Saints, have a blessed rest of the week. Have a blessed weekend. Stay in the presence of God. Before we come back next Thursday, build an altar unto the Lord. Find that special secret place. And in the subsequent sessions, we're going to share with you some prayers that you can use to consecrate your secret place in order to build an altar. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless each and every one of you. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Love you guys. Love each and every one of you. Good night. Good night.